Hey everyone, we're back with another video and today we're discussing everything you need to know about gross profit and gross profit margin. My name is Brandon and I'm the CEO of Poindexter, which is a simple financial planning application built specifically for people that don't know anything about finance or accounting. And we've helped thousands of businesses create forecasts and plan their profit margins going forward, so we do have experience with this topic. And the goal of the video today is to provide the simplest possible explanation of gross profit and gross profit margin and what they may be telling you about any scenario that you might be facing. So by the end of this video, you'll be an expert on gross profit and gross profit margin and be able to use them to make better decisions for your own business. We'll start by discussing why it's called gross profit. And if you're anything like me, then you originally assumed that it's just disgusting and it smells terrible. But believe it or not, that is not the case. If we look at the definition of gross itself, uh, we can see that it states it's consisting of an overall total exclusive of deductions. And when we think of gross profit in this way, it's similar to gross sales, which is the total amount of revenue we've earned through our different revenue streams taken together before anything's been deducted. So that's what gross profit is. It's profit before anything's been deducted. But this definition may seem a little confusing or even contradictory because how can we have profit without having deducted anything? Isn't profit what you have left over after you have deducted something? And you would be right in thinking that. Gross profit seems as if it's a bit of a misnomer but we could get a better sense of where it gets its name by looking at the income statement and its relationship to other types of profit. So here's a simple example of an income statement for a fictitious restaurant. And the income statement is going to be the document that contains all measures of profitability for the business. And if we take a look at the structure of the document, we, get, we start to get a sense of why gross profit is referred to as gross profit. So we'll go ahead and identify where on the income statement gross profit resides. And we can see that it's up sort of towards the top of the document, so it's pretty high up there. And if we travel a little further down, we can see that we have operating profit not too far below. And then if we travel even further down, we can see that we have net profit, or the final form of profit, which is the entire outcome of the income statement. And in this way, this hierarchy gives us a sense of the levels of profit, if you will, for the business. And with gross profit being up top, we can see that it's the first form of profit without anything else having been deducted from it yet. So this is where we can start to see that gross profit is gross. It is the first level of profit. Hopefully this provides a better visualization of where gross profit sits in the grand scheme of things. Now let's take a closer look at gross profit by examining its formula. And again, we'll be using the income statement to help illustrate the nature of the gross profit formula so that we can get a sense of where it comes from and what it means. And for this formula, we only have a couple elements that we need to be concerned with. And the first of which is total sales or revenue. And it also can be called gross sales. So you'll notice that there's a few different terms that you might be able to use interchangeably for some of these line items. Don't get too concerned about what the actual uh, name being used is. It's really just more the idea uh, that is represented by where it's placed on the income statement here. So revenue itself or total sales is the total amount of money we've collected from customers through the course of normal business operations. And that should be pretty straightforward. So uh, we understand what that element is. And the next element that we need is cost of revenue or cost of goods sold. And again, these can be used almost interchangeably, but generally what this section represents are these are the costs of actually producing revenue. So they're associated with the costs incurred uh, through revenue producing activities. So if we're selling a product or something like that, and we have some material costs that go into making that product, some labor associated with putting that product together, all of that stuff would be included in the cost of revenue section because without those activities, without those costs, we actually wouldn't have anything to sell. And that is generally the breakdown of what cost of revenue means. And all we do is we take revenue, we subtract cost of goods sold, and we end up with gross profit. So gross profit is then the profit left over from revenue producing activities. So it's the, again, the highest level uh, of profit. It is the profit before we've taken out any overhead or any sort of management salaries or things that generally are used to run the business, but not necessarily directly involved with producing revenue. Now that we understand a little more about gross profit and where it comes from, we can take a look at gross profit margin. And as I'm sure you're not surprised by this point, we're gonna be using the income statement yet again to illustrate the gross profit margin formula because that's where all of the elements for this equation come from. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab gross profit right here from this line. And that's because gross profit margin is based on gross profit. It comes from or is derived from gross profit. And all we're gonna do with gross profit 
is divided by revenue. And that's going to equal gross margin. So gross margin is just another term for gross profit margin. It's a shorter way of putting it. But what is this telling us right now? So we're taking gross profit, which we know is our uh, income generated from revenue producing activities. We're dividing it by revenue, which is total revenue, right? So what we're doing is we're representing our gross profit in terms of percentage of revenue. Or another way to think about it is that for every dollar in revenue that we make, what percentage of it is profit or gross profit in this case? And alternatively, which we can find out just by doing some back of the envelope math here, uh, what percentage of every dollar is cost? So why would we want to go through all the trouble to calculate gross profit margin? Why not just calculate gross profit and be happy with the money that we made? Well, gross profit margin offers a couple benefits that are worth using in certain situations where gross profit simply uh, either wouldn't work or wouldn't be as helpful. The first of which is comparing companies of different scale. Imagine company A, who we'll say is doing business in the ice cream industry. And their business as a whole is measured on the orders of thousands. So their revenues in the thousands, costs in the thousands. Um, relatively small overall. And then we have company B, whose revenues and other items on the income statement are measured in billions. So just by looking at gross profit, we're not going to be able to compare these two companies on an apples to apples basis. But if we look at gross margin, we actually level the playing field and get rid of the different scale of both businesses and instead focus on what the margin is or how efficient each company is at producing profit. This is good to use if you're in a situation where you're trying to benchmark your own company's performance against competitors, or if you're doing some kind of forecasting where you'd like to increase your margins in future periods. The second scenario is when we want to monitor business performance over some time horizon. The cool thing about gross profit margin is that it contains information about multiple variables within a single number. So right away, we can tell more about the business. It provides us more insight because it contains a lot of information within that single number. So just to solidify this example here, let's say that last month we did a gross margin of 60% and this month we have a gross margin of 55%. So we know that gross margin went down. So our profit as a percentage of revenue or gross profit as a percentage of revenue has decreased. Well, how would we start to deconstruct what this means? Well, we can go back to our formula that we have for gross margin and we know that it's gross profit divided by revenue. And we know the formula also for gross profit, which is revenue minus costs. And so if anything happens to gross margin, we know that it is one of these two variables that is affecting the outcome. So we have revenues or we have costs. And so something happened with either of those elements there. And ultimately, the only thing that could have happened with either of these variables is that revenue has increased or decreased relative to costs, or costs have decreased or increased relative to revenues. In the case of an increase in revenues relative to costs, we can start to come up with some reasons for why this might be happening. So revenues would increase relative to costs maybe because of price increases. So customers are now paying more for the same product than they were previously, and costs as a result did not increase as quickly. Secondly, we might be just selling higher margin products. So Maybe it's a good time in the economy and customers are purchasing more expensive items that have better margins for your business. Alternatively, if we want to consider decreases, which is the scenario we're facing in this example, in revenues relative to costs, we might have had a sale, a seasonal sale event. So we would have decreased the margins on our products that we're selling in light of this event that we're holding, which would mean that customers are getting a good deal and we might be selling more in volume, but the profit margin per product that we're selling has actually decreased. Alternatively, we also might be selling just lower margin products. In contrast to the good economic scenario, maybe uh, economic times are not quite as good and people are buying uh, budget items and using coupons and things of that nature. So those would decrease our margins because people would be paying a lesser amount for the products but our costs have not changed as a result. In scenarios where costs are increasing faster than revenues, and that could have actually led to this month's decline in gross margin, one thing that might have caused that would be shortages in certain products. So right now we have a lumber shortage going on, which has caused lumber prices to increase dramatically, but 
housing prices and the things you use lumber to build are not increasing at that same rate. So prices are staying relatively stagnant while the costs of the materials that build the houses, for instance, are increasing dramatically. So those would cause a decrease in our margins and eventually lead us to need to do something like increase prices. Secondly, we also have a scenario where regulatory changes affect the cost of overall business. So certain industries are regulated a lot more heavily than other industries, and any regulatory changes might significantly impact the cost of doing business in that industry. And so that would increase costs relative to revenues. Alternatively, in situations where costs are decreasing faster than revenues, we might have for instance, negotiated better terms with our suppliers. So we might be paying a small percentage less per shipment as a result of ordering more with our suppliers. And so that would result in higher margins for our business. Another example would be if we simplified our product. So maybe we don't need as many pieces or parts to build the product we, we previously were building. Uh, so that has led to a decrease in costs and a decrease in direct labor associated with putting that product together. So. As you can see, there's really only a couple things that gross margin can tell us. It's either that revenues are decreasing or increasing relative to costs, or costs are decreasing and increasing relative to revenues. And based on the answer uh, as to which is happening for your business, you'll be able to hone in on certain ideas or hypotheses about what led to that change. And then you can go about fixing it once you've identified what has caused that change. This concludes our tutorial on gross profit and gross profit margin. I hope you found this video helpful and now have a better idea of what gross profit is and what gross profit margin is. If you did find it helpful, please like and subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you next time. Thank you.